everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to start off with a basically third weekly video. In that video we're going to focus more on brown girl dreaming, analyzing craft and structure, and at the same time talking more about self and close reading. And now whenever we talk about the brown girl dreaming we talk about certain key facts. So first of all it was published in 2014. The setting actually combines several basically places, Ohio, South Carolina, and Brooklyn. The point of view was basically a first person narrative from Jacqueline's own point of view and perspective. And lastly, the genre is a memoir. And in our next slide, we're going to talk about the genre more specifically, and we're going to link the genre actually to the author's own and personal experiences. And now summarizing brown girl dreaming. So whenever we want to summarize this basically precious work, we have to ask ourselves three different questions. So what is it about? What is the point of view? And what personal history does it basically claim? So brown girl dreaming is a memoir in verse written by Jacqueline Whitson. The book recounts Whitson's childhood and coming of age experiences as an African American girl growing up in the 1960s and 1970s. It actually explores a lot of themes, spe specifically identity, family, racism, and the power of words in storytelling. Through poetry, the author reflects on her journey from Ohio to South Carolina to New York, capturing the complexities of her racial and cultural identity and her deep love for writing. The book actually received critical acclaim for its beautiful prose, and its exploration of the author's uh, personal history within the broader context of uh, the civil rights movement. As we follow on to the concept of vocabulary uh, that is highlighted in the brown girl dreaming, we're going to focus on a lot of words. And we're going to study the choice of words um, regarding the character or regarding the writer herself. Uh, which is uh, basically uh, Jacqueline Woodson, like why did she choose such uh, basically words and how does actually such words reflect the character's own point of view, behavior, and character, and even historical background. And now moving on actually to one of the most captivating linguistic devices that was used by the writer herself, Woodson, as it actually weaves a symphony of sound and meaning within the written and spoken language, as it also uh, vividly depicts the sensory experiences of the writer, uh, base, writer's world, especially her own basically childhood. Moving on to the last part that we're basically we're going to have at the end of the week, which is the grammar part, the conventions. Uh, we're going to start off talking about nouns, common nouns, and even proper nouns, and what actually the main difference between common and basically proper nouns. And before we start off with kinds of nouns, we have to start off with uh, basically the definition of noun itself. So a noun is a naming word. And it's used actually to identify people, places, objects, animals, or even ideas. And it has actually several types. So we have common nouns and we have proper nouns. So whenever we think about common nouns, we think about basically uh, places, people, objects, and animals. However, they are general. They're not specific. They refer to general basically names um, of people, general names of places, general names of objects, and even animals. We're not specifying anything here when we're talking about common names. And because it's like um, a general kind of noun, we don't really capitalize uh, the words that you have here. And the highlighted difference that you can see uh, between the basically proper and uh, common nouns, that proper nouns uh, basically refer to specific names of places, objects, and people. And here, because you know we're talking about specific kind of noun, you just have to have it capitalized. You have to start off with a capital letter. As you can see here, the examples are very specific. We're talking about specific names of places, of people, famous people. Uh, or objects, for example. So that's why we just have to have the first letter capitalized, as you can see. And now to sum up the differences that you have between the two types of nouns, we just have to say that common nouns describe general nouns, so we're not, they're not capitalized. However, proper nouns describe specific nouns that have to be basically here capitalized. And lastly, we're going to move on to analyzing character uh, regarding basically another work for um, the writer, a very famous writer, actually, his name is uh, Bill Watterson. 
So, um, Cabin in Hopes is a funny comic, uh, basically, book about a smart uh, a six-year-old a boy, his name is Kevin, and he's stuffed tiger. In Kevin's imagination, hopes comes to life, and they have uh, all sorts of adventures together. They explore the woods, time travel, in cardboard boxes, and talk about deep stuff, um, basically like life. The comic also shows Kevin's struggles with school and grown-ups. It's uh, basically funny, thoughtful, and, and, and people of all ages and generations loved it. And that's it for our third week. See you in class.